put this in my pocket. All right. Um, I hope you're all here planning to talk about stress and self-care. Are we in the right room? Okay, either way, get cozy, and um, I hopefully will make it worth your time this morning. Um, my name is Kelly Minky. I'm the health and wellness educator for Concordia Plans. I've been with Concordia Plans for almost nine months. I started in mid-May of last year. Um, if you're not familiar with Concordia Plans, um, it's wonderful. I've enjoyed every part of, of working with the team. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a military spouse. My husband retired after 22 years in the Marine Corps. I have three wonderful children and two very large fur babies. So um, busy time um, in our house for sure. I uh, earned my Bachelor of Arts in Health Education um, from Ashford University in 2013 while my husband was deployed. And then um, my Master's of Science in Public Health from Southern New Hampshire University while my husband was also deployed. Um, so lots of stress and self-care experience um, and nothing looks the same in every phase of our life. So really want to um, open that up to reality and hopefully provide some good resources. So, um, sorry. Mm. Okay, this is going to be fun. Um, in this presentation, I'll be focusing on mental health, um, specifically stress and self-care and where it fits in with our walk with Jesus. Um, we'll discuss the signs of stress, um, an overview of self-care, um, what it means and the biblical basis for it, um, as well as incorporate a quick practice. I'll also share information about um, mental health needs of LCMS church workers, which you could probably tell me more than I could tell you. Um, in addition, I want to make sure that you are aware of programs, services, um, self-care options um, available um, for those that are in the Concordia Health Plan and not in the Concordia Health Plan. So I want to give some um, good broad range resources as well. Okay, excuse me. I'm gonna see if my clicker works instead. Oh, you have one? Ah, thank you, okay, appreciate that. Uh, moving on. So to serve well, we need to be well. Okay, God, I hear you. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. Um, our mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health all work together. We really cannot negate taking care of one or the other and expect the other ones to flow well for us to be able to serve at our best. Um, just as the church is the body of Christ, we've heard that in several presentations um, just yesterday, um, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in both biblical analogies, each part plays a vital role and necessary for each part to be given attention, to be healthy and fully functioning in our gifts and callings. Um, we are called to serve others, yes, um, but we're also called to steward the resources that were given to us, um, including our mind, our body, and our spirit. So we really do need to give time to them. I know it's not easy. It's beyond just a challenge when you find yourself um, burning the midnight oil and meeting yourself coming and going, all those different um, analogies that we run into in life. But, um, and it can come, become quickly impossible where we find ourselves burnt out. So we wanna be aware of what that looks like for us. Um, but being well, again, allows us to serve others well. I know there was a presentation yesterday that was specifically about putting your oxygen mask on first. What does that mean? The flight attendant tells us every single time we get on the plane. Yes. Take care of yourself first before you can help others. Right. Because literally, in this instance, you can't do anything to help somebody when you're passed out in the seat next to them because you don't have oxygen. It, it happens the same way. We find ourselves with an empty cup and we have nothing to pour into anybody else. Um, so knowing kind of what that looks like, how to assess for it, and then at different points where those tools come into play. 
I do want to start with kind of um, a terminology test here um, because we want to be careful what terms we're mixing and, and really understanding what we're focusing on. Um, Mental health is the foundation for emotions, thinking, communication, learning, resilience, self-esteem. It's that whole umbrella of our mental well-being. Mental illness is not the same thing. Um, it involves a very you know, negative change in mental health that affects a person's thinking, feeling, behavior, um, and it impacts their day to day. So we wanna be careful not to use those terms interchangeably and really understand where they fit in. Um, poor mental health and mental illness are also not the same thing. A person can experience poor mental health and not be diagnosed with a mental illness or not be experiencing a true mental illness. Um, likewise, a person who is diagnosed with a mental illness can have um, experience of periods that they're in good mental health. They're experiencing um, physical, mental, and social well-being. Um, I think a good way to compare it is when we look at like our physical health. If we're eating healthy, we're exercising, we're ex you know, having good sleep habits, but we sneak a cookie from the cabinet or we um, stay up late one night or something like that, it doesn't mean that we are in poor physical health. We've just gone a little off the rails, right? And then we can get back on. Those are other ways to kind of think about the total impact of where that poor mental health versus mental illness comes into play. So I don't want anybody coming out of this conversation going, oh my gosh, I experienced this, I must have a mental illness. Not diagnosing anybody here, not going in that direction, but being able to think of it in that full circle aspect of, okay, maybe this is a little bit off. Maybe I do need to be aware of this and then seeing where some of those tools come in is really my point. So one thing to kind of look at, if everybody's kind of familiar with something like this, like your pain scale at the doctor's office, you're asked all the time, on a scale from zero to 10, how much pain are you in? How many times do we do something like this with our mental and emotional health? Do we really check in with ourselves and go, how am I feeling? How am I doing? Or is it when we blow up for no apparent reason and we go, whoa, what's going on? So we want to kind of catch those moments beforehand Doing a daily, weekly, whatever kind of cadence check-in is really important. We wouldn't, you know, walk around limping and not ask what's going on with my knee. We shouldn't walk around limping mentally and not ask what's going on in my mind, what's going on in my emotions. So kind of keeping that in mind as well. In the folders, there is a handout that um, looks like this next slide here. Um, that really ties in the connection to physical, um, we'll say, symptoms and what could really be going on um, in our mental and emotional health. Some of these you might think of, um, like the increased respirations or um, higher heart rate, things like that, um, because those are more immediate. You know, you feel those when you're in a stressful or anxious situation. But it's also tied to blood sugar levels. Um, chronic headaches, digestion issues, those kinds of things. And it's not to say that you know um, migraines aren't real, and it's not to say that irritable bowel syndrome isn't something real, but there is a direct correlation to stress levels on all of these too. Um, because we have wonderful things called hormones, right, that are also affected by our stress levels. Um, with central obesity, that's a direct correlation to the cortisol levels you have in your body from a stress response. So kind of keeping that in mind, not sleeping well, your cortisol levels don't get to come back down, those kinds of things. Um, with blood sugar, everybody heard of the fight or flight response to stress? That's when our blood sugar goes up. If we're in a constant fight or flight response, our blood sugars don't go back down and then our bodies don't know what to do with it. So kind of being aware when you're going to your, hopefully, your regular doctor checkups and getting your blood sugars checked, if they're seeing kind of a general trend upward with that, not only asking yourself, am I eating right? Am I exercising? Am I managing my stress? Am I keeping myself even? What can I do to do all of those things? Um, let's see here. Is there any others that you can think of maybe that, um, as your wheels are turning, that might be connected to stress or that you or somebody you know of is experiencing? Willing to share? 
Definitely. Like um, having arguments, things like that. Mm -hmm. So that irritability maybe. Yes? Situational triggers. Uh-huh. That do you feel like maybe wouldn't necessarily be um, something that would tip you off or just in general? Mm, okay, so maybe crowd or things like that. Okay. Very good. Yeah, so being aware, yes. Just general um, being tired. Uh huh. Down, right. Sleeping. Definitely. Um, just to kind of piggyback off. Yeah, when you maybe are experiencing that, do, how do you assess that? Give, give us some examples of is it certain times of the day, things like that? Uh, it, it takes me a while to realize it. Okay. Yeah. And wake up and realize, you know, it's probably got something to do with the issue. Very good. Good. So th those are the kinds of those touch points with ourselves. Um, and then hopefully coming out of this, having some resources. Okay, if that's what this is, how do I, how do I manage it? How do I cope with it? What, what level is it affecting me at? Things like that. Because some of these are those early warning signs, like, oh, I just really kind of need to take a nap, or um, I've, I've got a little bit of a headache. Some of these are those long-term ones, though, that we really need to be aware of. And not that there's any better or worse time to reach out for support, but those are definitely the times to reach out for support. Um, we always need to know who our social network is, who our support system is. Um, but when we're seeing, say, hair loss, increased blood pressure, um, increased uh, blood sugar, things like that, all of those things compounding, really a good idea to bring in the professional support to help weed out really the root of it, because then we don't feel like we're spinning our wheels, right? Okay. So, I don't need to tell you the church workers in the LCMS are stressed. The, these numbers can tell me that, but I didn't need these numbers to tell me that either. Um, so, of the presentations I got to listen to yesterday and just talking to people, um, there's no doubt that church workers are stressed. I'd like to hear from you, if you're willing to share, where you feel like the majority or like the first thing that pops in your head comes from stress-wise in your roles. Trying to balance family and work. Mm -hmm. That um, trendy phrase of work-life balance, right? What is that? How do we find that, right? Okay. Anything else? Staff conflict. Okay. Like conflict of personalities, sure, definitely. Especially as leaders, trying to, to help support those different personalities, for sure. Yes? I'm from Oxford, Michigan, and we had a high school shooting. Oh, um, yes. And then we had the Michigan State shooting where some of those kids that were in that building were also at Michigan State, and so everyone, mm. it's, a, it's a small town, and everyone is affected, affected. in some way. Yeah, yeah. So grief, loss, fear, all those real emotions in, in a traumatic situation. Absolutely. Uh, okay, she's just checking on me. Very good. Um, so beyond the numbers, there's, there's real stories. There's real emotion. There's real need. Um, so being able to hear that from everybody, for us to know it um, at Concordia Plans and try and um, provide some of these tips and resources for you today. So we'll dive right into those. We've already talked about some of the, you know, we know we need to exercise, you know, that's good for our physical health. It is good for our mental health. We release those endorphins. We've got to move. We've got to, there's tons of research out now. Um, we don't always look at it the right way, um, and it can become very easily, especially in our culture, more of a vanity thing than anything. So that's not where I'm going with this. Um, also, eating regular meals and staying hydrated. We need to fuel our bodies to have the energy it needs for all of the wonderful things that come at us every single day. And then sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Wonderful sleep. Um, it's different for everybody, what your needs are, what your schedule is, things like that. But truly knowing what that looks like for you, what a healthy bedtime is, how many hours of sleep you need, whether you're getting quality sleep. Does anybody have one of these things that kind of helps you see how you're sleeping at night? Even just using that as an assessment point 
every couple of days, once a week, kind of checking back in on yourself can be a great tool um, to know how things are going. Yes, sir? What does it do? Um, so a smartwatch or any kind of a Fitbit type device, you wear it at night, will measure your sleep quality. It will tell you how long you've slept and tell you how long you're in each phase of sleep as well. So it can be helpful, um, not only how many hours did I sleep, but did I get good sleep last night? Because um, our bodies need that for restoration, right? But beyond just sleep, rest. There's a difference between this is my bedtime and I'm going to sleep and having moments of rest. Um, it's almost counterintuitive in our culture to think of taking time to rest because we're doers. We, we know we have all this stuff going on. Um, and busyness can equate to accomplishment, right? And we have to kind of be aware of that um, in our culture that we're in. Um, but we need rest amidst all the doing. We're called to rest amidst all the doing. Um, just touching on John 15, using the image of the vine, it does not produce grapes and fruit all the time. It has periods of time when it is dormant and is not producing. So we should do that the same. Um, psychology Today um, sums up self-care um, is more than just going to get manicures and going to spa days and things like that, but knowing who you are and your limits. Um, meaning recognizing when you are doing more than you are used to handling and trying to figure out what can be done to slow down. I picture that mouse on the wheel just going, going, going and not knowing how to make it stop. So I want to talk a little bit about self-care on the individual level because it is different for everybody. Knowing what works for you, when to use it, um, and in different instances. Um, would anybody like to share how they utilize self-care. Yes. Exercise. Okay, great. Do you do it every day? Almost. Okay, nice. Very good, on a regular basis. That's, that's the key, right, is that consistency. Awesome. Anybody else would like to share? It's not a specific thing, but mm -hmm. one of the kind of revelatory things for me was hearing from somebody that if you work with your hands, rest with your mind. If you uh. work with your mind, rest with your hands. Yeah. So that gave me kind of the freedom to recognize that, like, you know, decluttering the closet, like, that can be my rest time, even though it would seem like work. Sure. Yeah. And, and so, you know, different things like that where I can see measurable progress, and it's something that has a positive effect on my life. Yep. I can consider that rest. <laughs> I think you and I could be friends. <laughs> to see, no, but it's, it's, it's um, one of those, we think of it as mindless, right? But it clears us, it organizes, it gives us a sense of accomplishment without about a bunch of you know, mental energy or physical energy. So that's good to know for yourself because um, we do each have to have that thing that we go to that helps. Very good. Um, so some other ones that I wanted to share, um, we all know we need to go in prayer. We need to be on our knees. We need to be um, talking to God, having those conversations because that's where reality is. That's where kind of the rubber meets the road is when we're on our knees. Um, but then there's action on our part that needs to be taken as well. Um, I would love to think that he's gonna come down and just like swoop it all the way and someday he will but not necessarily when I want him to. So there's still, there's still a part that I have to play in this. Um, so practicing gratitude is a huge um, recommendation that as a health coach, I, I made quite often. Um, you have someone sitting in front of you, just everything is awful. I feel terrible, this, 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 and this went wrong. And not to dismiss what they were saying to me, but offering to kind of step aside and say, tell me three things that were positive today. Let's flip this a little bit. Let's tr retrain our brains a little bit. Um, so having a gratitude practice can be very helpful as well. At the end of every day or every Friday night, think of three great things that happened that week. Or if they weren't so great, just tell me something positive. You know, those kinds of things can really be helpful to not seem like everything is just down in the dumps. And then kind of more recently and preparing for um, this presentation, I dug a little bit deeper into um, resources and things like that that are available. 
Um, these two books are actually through Concordia Publishing House. I know I saw Equipped over there yesterday, just so everybody knows it's available. Um, and they are both written by LCMS pastor Christopher Kennedy. He um, writes about ways to respond faithfully to stress and um, to be better equipped to handle stress by putting on the armor of God. Um, so I really appreciated reading these books and being able to know that God wants me to be equipped. He wants me to handle my stress. He's not giving me the stress. This world brings on this stress. But I have tools and resources just within me to help with those things. Um, there is also with the busyness and needing to accomplish, we got to be nice to ourselves. We got to be okay when things don't go how we planned it or what our expectations were or what we think the expectations of other people were. Um, because that's a dangerous place to live, is in that world of expectation. Um, because generally we're wrong about what those expectations were, or we're unrealistic about them for ourselves. So being aware of that. Um, going back to John 15 in verse 1 and 2. And this is probably not your favorite verse, so I'm just going to say that ahead of time. Um, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. It doesn't sound like very much fun, does it? To be like pruned and clipped and all that kind of stuff. But it's necessary to reevaluate, to see those areas in our life that even if there are good things coming out of it, is it where God has us still? Is it something that needs to be handed off to somebody else? Or that if we're helping somebody, we need to say, okay, spread your wings, do it yourself. Because we need to be careful about when it becomes about us and when it's still about them. But also um, not being scared to let things go. Fears is a um, very deceptive feeling. So being aware of where that's coming in as well. Um, it might feel like loss if you have to let something go. So that is really where on our knees, knowing where God has us is so important. Um, and just trusting in that province. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly, those, those whispers that come and just take, the, take advantage of the situation, right? Um, in the Grace Under Pressure book, I believe, he talks about that a lot, about being aware of where that attack is going to come in when we are vulnerable, when we are trying and trying and trying, and being able to take that step back and see what the real situation is and, and make that kind of choice in the matter, for sure. Awesome. Um, I did, I wanted to share, I did hear a pastor say this beautifully um, recently um, about kind of knowing where our place is, that um, the immediate isn't always what's important. There's always going to be immediates. I need your help right now. This is going on right now. Please come right now. But that isn't necessarily God saying, you need to go there right now. It's hard to say no, but in those moments, sometimes the best thing is, I think you can handle this yourself, or call me in the morning and tell me how it went, because we can't fix everything. And especially if we don't fix it, then we bear that burden, we bear that emotion, and that can be hard to let go of as well. So being able to discern what's really immediate and what's necessary in God's plan, um, because other things can be just distractions and they just keep us busy and they burn us out and do not produce any fruit at all. Um, want to also not get away from talking about solitude. Yes, it's great to have community. We need to be with others. We're called to be with others. But even Jesus withdrew and spent time in solitude and just prayed. So we definitely can do that. 
it's hard. It doesn't need to be a week-long vacation with nobody around us. You just get away from me people. It can be something as simple as five minutes in your prayer closet and taking some time for yourself. That's one of those things we really need to find what that looks like for us and not feeling guilty about doing it. Because guilt is one of those lies that um, we probably hear quite often, way more than we should. Um, so one thing I want to share, I think this was talked about, I don't know who all was able to be in the um, kind of last session of the day yesterday, is um, ShareBoard. That is for lay leaders that Concordia Plans um, has set up. It just went live on the 15th. Um, and it is a community forum, essentially, for lay leaders to share, hey, I've got this going on. How did you handle this? Being able to share those resources and then support um, in their ministries as well. But I was blessed to be able to um, share content with them and write a white paper on um, recognizing stress and um, some stress management tips. So in that, I organized kind of the tips in what I need immediately, what I can use as maintenance and kind of long term, and then one that can be used interchangeably. So I wanted to share some of those with you as well. Um, in the moment or short term, my favorite one is called P-B-O-R. It's pause, breathe, observe, and respond. And it's not react, it's respond for a reason. Um, react um, comes off as, I gotta do it now. And that's, that's what we're trying to avoid doing. Taking a breath is huge. Our bodies need oxygen to think clearly, and, and then it takes us that time, that step back. And then the observe part is that assessment part. What's really going on? What is my role in this situation? Do I have a role in this situation? And then choosing that response in whatever time frame needs to be there. So being okay with not having to make a decision right then and there. For long-term, time management is really important. And that's where that no word comes in. Because we have to be able to say, no, I don't have time for this. But also being realistic with our expectations of how long is that project really going to take me to put together efficiently, effectively, and then do well with it. Um, the U version app, does everybody have that? Everybody familiar with that? They have really great blogs. They have an article on their blog called um, Learning to Rest in the Busy World. And so they do a great job as well of kind of try this for a week and try this for a week to be able to find what that tool is for you um, to really be able to manage time and fit in that section of rest for yourself. And then one last thing I wanted to share as far as tips is um, journaling. That can be a <laughs> not so fun word for everybody. So I want to explain a little bit. I don't necessarily mean keeping a diary where you're dating it, it's got to sound all pretty and draw pictures and things like that. Um, this is whatever it means for you. Um, a free write is kind of my favorite thing to suggest to get started. I'm a detail person, so I want punctuation, I want capitals, I want full sentences, and then I forget what I'm writing about. I forget the whole purpose of what I started to jot down and I'm stressed even more and I'm frustrated. So this is one that I try to use quite a bit is just write. I set a timer for a minute and I just brain dump was a term that I heard a couple of times yesterday. Just get it out. It doesn't have to mean anything. It doesn't have to make sense. But then looking back at it and you can kind of go, oh, I didn't know I felt that way. Oh, I do remember that happened. You know, there's all those things stuck that are affecting us, but we don't necessarily know that they are until we get them out a little bit. And then taking the next step to decide, what do I do with this information? Is there a situation in here I need to go back and talk to somebody about? Is this something that I just have to let go, crumple it up, and throw it away? There's power in being able to tear something up and toss it in the trash can and be done with it. So there's that kind of decision point of what to do with that, but it can be really helpful just taking a minute to get it out. Does anybody have questions or anybody tried any of these before? Well, maybe you will now and you can come tell me if it worked for you. I just wanted to, like, when I'm stressed out, I can feel it often. It's really hard for me to fall asleep at night. 
Mm -hmm. freedom, like just everything that's on my mind, writing it out. Perfect. Then I can let go of it. Yes. Some of it is like, these are things I pray about. Some of it is these are things I need to remember tomorrow. Uh huh. And being able to wake up and look at the list and have it. Sure. Sure. It's great to do at night. Do you keep like a notebook next to your, yeah, absolutely. Get it out, write them down. Um, one other thing I've suggested in this is, especially when it's kind of hard to go to sleep, is keeping that notebook. And then just the last thing you do is, Lord, if these are things that I need to do something about, bring them back to my mind tomorrow. If I don't, then don't. Like, I don't want them. They're yours. You tell me what to do with them. I'm out. I'm going to bed. You know, so we got to be okay with, with calling in who knows more than we do, right? And, and letting it go, for sure. Very good. So if you're interested in ShareBoard, um, like I said, it's for lay leaders to share information, resources, things like that. Um, and it can be connected through this QR code or going onto the web page. So you'll find um, the paper that I wrote on there as well as information from event planning to um, helping someone through disability. There's a lot of different um, resources already on there. Um, and it just went live on Wednesday. So the community is building. Um, so we hope that that continues. Very good. So want to be sure that um, we all understand that self-care is biblical, right? We're not doing anything wrong by taking care of ourselves. And there's more than just these scriptures that I was able to find um, about taking care of ourselves and setting aside that time to do so. Um, it's how we do it, right? We're, we're not talking about... Um, going for manicures and spa days, things like that. It's not, you know, leave me alone time. It's soul care. We're really trying to steward what has been given to us. Um, it's meant to help you not only slow down and recharge, but also to help you reconnect with God in every season of your life, especially those that seem arid, overwhelming um, and without guilt of not doing um, or wasting your time being lazy or self-indulgent. All right, so are you ready to practice? I am because I got to take a breath. I got to take a breath. All right, very good. So I'm not messing with this computer. I'm leaving it right here because it will for sure break on me if I do. So I hope you can hear it when I put it on my phone. I'll turn it up. Welcome to this Abide Meditation. I'm Tyler Boss. God Breathe and close your eyes. Into our lives for a reason. In Genesis, you can see God's good plan for people. And this plan includes regular rest. Genesis 2 says, And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. God didn't need to rest. Scripture tells us that God never sleeps. But God rested to show us how to live. God rested so that we would know how to flourish. Sometimes we have to stop working. Are you neglecting God's call to stop and rest? As you consider how often you find true rest, Sabbath rest, space where you give your burdens and cares to God on a regular basis, take a deep, slow breath. Let the comfort of your Creator be your resting place. Take a moment to reflect on how you might find resting difficult. Receive God's invitation to rest, secure, because you can trust in Jesus. He is the one in control, and He is good. You can rest in that fact. Pause and prepare your mind and heart to listen for God's voice today. Consider God's invitation to rest. 
Are you ready to accept this offer and to trust in God's provision for your life? Let's pray. Lord God, I want to build a habit of Sabbath rest in my life. Not just taking a day or two off from work, but really resting in you. Help me to know what that looks like. Thank you for the reminder today that you will provide for all of my needs. And that you want me to take time away from the hustle and bustle regularly. You are the one who restores my soul. The world will not fall apart if I stop to regain my strength. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So what, um, so we kind of come back to, what um, are your thoughts about maybe utilizing some of that or did something come to mind during that? Hmm. It's hard because I thought that my brain was kept going other places, right? Yep. And then I learned that it's okay if my brain goes other places. Mm-hmm. No, I'm glad that you said that, though, about the, the thoughts, right? Because um, we can't always just turn them off, right? They're, they're going to come. Um, one mindfulness kind of practice is accept those thoughts. Know that they're going to come. Kind of catch them, acknowledge them, and toss them back away and kind of keep coming back to focus. That's the practice part of it, right? Yeah, very good. Anything else? Any questions about that? That was from the Abide app. Um, it is a free app, so there are um, certain aspects of it. You know, you can choose maybe the two-minute one versus then the five-minute one. You have to pay the premium. But there are plenty of short ones on the free version that will really help with that initial kind of practice. And then you can decide from there if there's more that you'd like to purchase the premium version for. But it's searchable. You can choose the topic things like that. So it's a great resource. CPH also has a resource similar to that um, called Pray Now. So they'll, they do, um, there's Bible studies, there's meditations, things like that also involved in that. Great. That um, Pray Now is what that's called. I think that one is maybe eight bucks, but that's, you just pay for the app once kind of thing. There's, it's not too bad for that. Very good. All right. I do want to, um, before we wrap up, there's probably 10 or 15 more minutes in here, is kind of mention some of those other actual tools and services. Most of what we've talked about um, so far is more of what we can do ourselves or how we can share um, with others some of those things. These are resources that are available. Um, I wanted to start with those that are available to all LCMS workers. These, you have no connection to the um, Concordia Health Plan, anything like that. Um, their uh, worker wellness on lcms.org has wonderful resources, some of them similar to what I've already talked about, but also links to um, local resources. Our Concordia Plans mental health page, and you do not have to be part of Concordia Plans to go on the web page and search district um, resources, things like that. You'll know if, if you need to kind of log in to find other information, but it's organized very well by I need help right now, I'm looking for local resources, things like that. Um, and most of them link out to those resources as well. Did you, were you able to get your picture? 
Okay, good. <laughs> I didn't want to switch it too far on you. On um, Concordia plans, if you are a member or an employer, you can go on the website and, and choose kind of how you're coming into the web page and um, be able to then get to more specific resources. It's organized by um, mental health, physical health, and then all of the other um, wellness benefits that are available. As a member, if you click on the mental health card, um, it takes you to this is what it looks like. And again, this is, you don't have to sign in. There's no um, personal information given at this point at all. And then um, you can decide kind of where you're going with that information. As an employer, um, it's pretty similar. You can select kind of what you're looking for as far as wellness solutions. And then there is a mental health toolkit that is available with other ways to support your workers um, to truly feel like they can share kind of their mental health struggles, but then also resources for leaders to know how to support with those, how to create that culture of, of true wellness. Um, within the Concordia Health Plan, um, these are programs and services that are offered for a, a plethora of um, wellness areas. Um, some of them are for prevention, some of them are rewarding healthy behavior, some of them are more diabetes um, re related, um, preventing diabetes, managing or reversing. Um, and then we have some telehealth um, options for like uh, staying out of the urgent care or the emergency room, which is 98.6. And then SWORD is a physical therapy that is um, virtual. The EAP, I want to give a little bit more attention to because um, it is more of our, our mental health resource as far as the Concordia Health Plan is concerned. Um, this is available for all church workers enrolled in the CHP and anyone in their household. So not everybody knows that. Um, they don't necessarily have to be on the health plan, but if they share your address and you have the health plan, the EAP is available to them. Um, we have members that have, you know, children that have come home from college and they utilize the EAP to help with resources for them or when they go away for college using resources to help for them. Also, the, if you don't have the health coverage but you still have any connection with Concordia Plan services like retirement, that sort of thing, the EAP is also available to you even if you don't have the health coverage. It is related to the health coverage. Oh, well, so I don't currently have the health coverage. Mm -hmm. I definitely got the EAP code, no problem. Okay. Okay, yeah. I know they won't turn anybody away. If, if you need help, you can do it, but it, it is connected to the health plan. Okay. So just being, yes, ma'am. Um, is it with, with the, so it's usually six sessions? Six sessions are is covered. Mm -hmm. Per person in your house or six sessions total? Per person, per person. and actually per topic. So if you reach out for a certain instance, they kind of dive down and realize, okay, this is a financial issue. That's that's a topic. You get you know six sessions to work out that financial concern, but then you continue to talk and oh now we maybe we've got some family things going on. That's another topic. That's six sessions. So knowing that it doesn't end. Oh sorry you used it, and then also beyond that, if there's still need for support things like that, then they help connect with your behavioral health services through your plan specifically to make sure you can continue that support with the provider. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and outside of the EAP, if you're covered under a different health plan, um, most most health plans will have some sort of behavioral or mental health support as well. It just depends on what that looks like on your end. But knowing to ask specifically for what that looks like is important. All right. But we do have great success with our EAP. There. Um, Again, I don't want to share a bunch of numbers, but we are it is being utilized, and we have a great resolution rate with it. Our pastors are using it. Our um, some of our uh, other workers, our school teachers, things like that, are, are using it and um, being able to find what they need and get the support that they need, whether within the EAP itself or being referred where they can. Um, there is also the pastoral support network, um, specifically for pastors and their families, because we know they, their, their challenges are a little different than ours, right? They're usually the ones that we're going to, to look to for support and answers. They need someone to go to as well. So this is a very specific network for them to be able to um, get the guidance and support that they need to. 
And then these are some of the examples of maybe telemedicine or other plans that do also offer um, more of a mental health or behavioral health opportunity. Any other questions on maybe what those services look like for you or what they look like within the CHP? Yes? Those six sessions, do they have to be spread out over a certain time or anything? Um, I want to say that it's per maybe plan year, plan, you know, program year. But no, I mean, it doesn't have to be every week. It doesn't have to be. It's just when you're, when you're calling in or you've set it up with that counselor. Yeah. You can search by um, faith-based, Christian. There's, a, you know, def several different ways that you can make sure you're kind of finding maybe that counselor that works best for you. Yes. Because I work for Shepherds Canyon Retreat and we do concentrated sessions with, with a therapist to come in. Oh. Like every day. For okay. I gotcha. Yeah, maybe reach out and see if that's something that they could provide if it counts kind of the same way. That's a I've never had that question come up before. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Great idea. All right. So hopefully we understand and we agree that in order to serve well, we need to be well in, in all of these aspects, that there really can't be um, large holes and gaps to be able to assess and be able to know kind of how we're doing, checking in with ourselves. Um, and yes, we know church workers get stressed. We um, know that self-care is biblical. And you have many ways, you have many options of what that looks like to be able to find what works for you and then pulling in that support network for some maybe accountability or sharing how that's going for you so that, again, it's not just rolling around in your own head. Um, and then I did put up the other resources on this slide um, that I utilized for um, this presentation and kind of the concepts that they discuss. So outside of the um, Abide app and things like that, the two books that I already mentioned, Vantage Point by Brenda um, Shank. She's wonderful. She's the um, founder of Run Hard, Rest Well. Um, she also um, has great information on kind of that rest. Yes, sir. And her last name is J. J A. -N I knew that wasn't right as soon as I read it. I was like, I know I, it was a typo. So yes, J A N K. I apologize. Um, and then Raw Coping Power by uh, Dr. Joel Bennett. He um, talks about how to use stress as a learning opportunity and not always viewing it as, oh no. So being able to kind of flip that a little bit and um, increase what's called your set point so that you're not just settling. You're not just going uh, day by day and not realizing how can I improve my life and actually thrive in this world because that's our ultimate goal, right? Yes? Will, they, will you have these slides available for us? Um, I don't know if there's anybody that I send them to. I know they're recording um, the audio of it, but if you, my card is in there. If you want to email me, I can send them to you. Yes. Any other questions or comments? You, like I said, you don't have to go outside in the cold and the wind, but we got 45 minutes. So please feel free to ask me questions or um, come up to me afterwards if there's anything you'd like to share. Thank you for your time. <laughs>